In 2024, we will mostly cruise in Canada's British Columbia. Some of our time will of course be spent in the nearby San Juans, but we start with a leisurely day trip around Fidalgo Island, just across the Swinomish Channel from our home port of Laconer, Washington. In our preview video published in February, we promised to share Emerson's resource data with you. This first outing is a bit short, but our cruising is often a mix of long days reaching an area and then short boating days between anchorages and marinas. We start with one of those shorter boating days. We suspect that these shorter cruises have a part in at least one of our resource constraints. Since we are starting fresh today, we will likely not see this limitation on this trip. We start our season with a full tank of fuel and rigorous cleaning of our freshwater system. After that, we keep our hot water tank on to avoid bacterial growth that can happen between 40 and 140 degrees Fahrenheit. We think that we have extracted some extra volume from the holding tank, thanks to a technique we learned in Campbell River's Discovery Harbor. Like many, we keep the boat onshore power to trickle charge our batteries. And since we don't use a lot of propane, we haven't yet topped off our propane tanks. Here are some things we want to know before we go. We heard that silting is an issue here, so we carefully watch our depth in this channel. To avoid excitement, we go through deception pass at slack, or slightly before. And we check the wind forecast and currents for Southern Rosario before leaving port to avoid sporting conditions. Docking a boat with currents is a spectator sport. Local knowledge tells us that slack in the Swinomish Channel is halfway between high and low tide. We found that slack occurs 30 to 55 minutes after that midpoint and most often at the high end of that range. This adjustment allows us to time our arrivals when possible, making for a quieter time. Fidalgo is a charming island, helped by its location. It has beautiful views in all directions, and we feel like we are on vacation when we visit. Many cruisers from the United States make Anacortes on Fidalgo Island, their jump-off point to the San Juans or British Columbia. It has great provisioning and a full complement of marine services. And the facilities at Cap Santa Marina are excellent. Most of the water views can be enjoyed from local green spaces, such as this view from Cap Santa Park. The weather looks grim, but the predict wind forecast calls for clearing skies. We'll see. The people here are friendly. Life is simple, the restaurants are great, and the town itself is adorable. While not on an island, things here move at island speed. Its marina is filled with friendly boaters and is professionally run. A 
of seven feet hides mud flats on both sides of the channel. Just a little more would hide these rocks as well. Best to pay attention to the channel markers. Most know Deception Pass State Park for its iconic bridges spanning two islands, quiet old growth forests, and excellent camping. We know it for its rugged cliffs, commanding views, and amazing sunsets at Rosario Beach and in Bowman Bay. The Strait of Juan de Fuca connects this body of water with the Pacific Ocean. Our border with Canada runs down the middle, right along with frequent westerlies. Only half of a mile outside of Deception Pass is before mentioned Bowman Bay. Most days when passing by, we are eager to get to the islands or to return to our home port. Not today. We will tie up to the public dock in Sharp Cove and explore Rosario Beach. The short distance and our slow approach had almost no impact on our resources. This is a great stop even in mediocre weather. The view from the boat is always so different when compared to the view from land. Today, we had two things in mind. One, we wanted to know what these tide pools have to offer. Looks like there is not a lot to see at a six foot tide. We are planning to come back when the tide is going to be minus three feet. The tide pools should be epic. Two, can we dock here at a minus three foot tide? Our depth finder showed nine feet of water. We would be in the mud. Stops such as this one are great opportunities to use the comforts of Emerson. For now, we will turn north along the coast of Fidalgo Island and towards Flounder Bay. Marina, located in Flounder Bay, is one of the marinas that can rightfully label itself a gateway to the San Juan Islands. We haven't stopped here, but heard that it offers ice, limited groceries, and fuel. Thatcher Pass is only four and a half miles away. Just beyond Flounder Bay is Washington Park, a 220-acre city park atop the seaside cliffs of Fidalgo. The park offers camping, a boat launch, picnic shelters, and a 2.2 mile loop that winds its way along the bluffs, where it offers views of the Olympic Mountains and the San Juan Islands across the water. We don't often encounter commercial traffic, but today we have to cross the paths of a northbound tanker and a southbound cargo ship. Especially since we are not transmitting AIS information, we also maneuvered to clearly signal our intentions to pass behind these vessels. We also switched our VHF radio to scan the local VTS channel, in addition to channel 16. AIS helps us to pace ourselves so that we pass astern to both of these vessels while keeping a safe distance.
James Island is a state park with a dock and some mooring balls. We anticipated currents to hold us against the dock at our departure and therefore position for a quick getaway. Our forecast called for a steady wind from the west, but we like to check the buoys in our area, and by now, those called for a small craft advisory overnight, with increased winds blowing straight into this bay. We decided to make for home. If we leave now, we will get there right at sunset. The north shore of Anacortes has a history as a deep water port and is still used as such. Sprinkled in are residential areas, a marina, and the local ferry docks. Here, we pay close attention to fast-moving ferries connecting Anacortes to neighboring islands and Sydney on Vancouver Island. Refineries are not the prettiest sights to see, but we enjoy the products they produce and refineries have to be somewhere. We have gotten used to these two, and instead of focusing on them, enjoy the views of the Cascade Mountains beyond the water, accentuated by Mount Baker. rush home and a strong current against us in the Swinomish Channel put a dent into our otherwise excellent fuel economy. The chemistry of Emerson's AGM batteries require long periods of absorption charge to fully recover from anything above 80% to the full charge of 100%. Thank you for joining us. 